Hey everybody, it's Mike with the Claim Squad Public Adjusters, and uh, if you've never watched my video before, this is how you can get a hold of me, okay? You're going to have my email here, my cell phone number, you can reach me direct, and also my website. Now, please support the channel. If you don't like insurance companies like me, like this video, subscribe to the channel. This is going to help us make a tight community, tight-knit community against insurance companies where I can educate you, give you some tips, and tell you how things are done and when you need to get help for your claim. So today's video, we're going to be talking about the new insurance laws that recently was signed last Thursday, which was May 26. The new laws are going to take effect July 1st of 2022. So welcome to the dark side. I want to introduce you to somebody. This is Mr. Senator Jim Boyd. This is this guy right here. He loves insurance companies. So let me ask you guys a question. Do you think this man just woke up in the middle of the night? Well, let me explain first off who he is, where he came from, his background. So he's a senator over in the basically Tampa area, Bradenton, okay? Right here. He is an insurance agent. Now, if you recall from any of my other videos, you'll find out that agents get their money from insurance companies, a percentage based on the policies that they sell. Okay. They actually don't look out for people. They will more than likely on occasion screw people with policies. And um, it's not the old days. But anyhow, let's get back to Mr. Boyd. So last year, he was behind a couple bills, which was SB 76. And then this year um, for the new law. So two years back to back, this guy has been at the forefront of helping and loving insurance companies. Okay. He loves insurance companies. So let me ask you, did he just wake up one night last year for the first round of new laws and say, you know what? I feel bad for all these insurance companies. I feel bad for the CEOs. Um, I want to do something about it. Let's change some laws. I think the more, as we know with politicians, probably the more likely scenario is somebody approached this guy, found out he was an agent, lobbyists come in. Mr. Boyd, would you like us to donate to your campaign? Mr. Boyd, do you need a new car? Mr. Boyd, um, maybe your bank account needs to be filled up a little bit. I don't know I'm just saying I have no inside information but it goes without saying probably some funny business so this is the most hated man in Florida he needs to be voted out um, he loves insurance companies and hates citizens of Florida uh, seriously he hates people so the meat and potatoes of these new laws has to do with roofs, okay? All shapes, all sizes. Um, they really don't want us to have homeowners any type of advantage when it comes to getting a new roof. So let's, let's talk about a few things here. Let's talk about some of these new laws, all right? So it's passing more of the cost on to you and me, the homeowner. It's going to give insurance companies abil ability to have two different deductibles. Your policy premiums will be more expensive. Remember, these laws do not reduce the expense of the high cost of premiums. You may get a credit or discount if you take a higher part of the deductible. So you can opt out of these deductibles, which I highly advise, by signing a form from the OIR, which is the Office of Insurance Regulation. It has to be approved form. Now, these new deductibles, which is basically 2% of coverage A, which probably about 
75% of the people have in Florida, or this is new, 50% of the roof costs. I don't like this one at all. Um, oh crap. So the new roof deductibles can only be applied to replacement cost claim and not to a covered pearl like a hurricane, tornado, hail, fire, tree, or roof loss requiring repair that is less 50% than the roof. Okay. So this other continuation of the roof laws, insurance companies can't refuse. This is supposed to be the consumer protection part. Insurance companies can't refuse to write a policy for a roof that is less than 15 years old because in the past year, insurance companies will say, your roof is eight years old. We're not going to write you a policy. Progressive was doing that. Now, if it's older than 15, the insurance company is going to require and if they require a new roof, let's say by the way of a renewal of your policy or you're trying to get new insurance, homeowners can actually have an inspector state that there's at least five years of useful life remaining and that's supposed to preserve your ability to get the new insurance or renewal of the policy. I doubt that this will hold up. Just my feelings. So then the third thing which was taken away from us, which is a tragedy, is a 25% building code, 611.1.1. So in this building code, it essentially stated that if your roof is damaged more than 25%, you get a new roof by the insurance company. So um, now, if it's been built by the 2007 FBC, Florida Building Code, Okay, then the insurance company only has to repair it. This is why this makes no sense. You are weakening the structure. The 25% building code was put in for those roofs that have been weakened by strong storms, strong winds. Now you're letting a roof be repaired that's already been compromised, which will increase the chances of more severe damage being done. All right. Um, boy, this is the time to open up an insurance company. Get a group of people. Because the, in, the, the state of Florida is basically covering their butts for everything. I mean, they're almost not even going to be responsible for anything anymore. It's, it's a bad, bad time to be in Florida. Claim handling. I feel this section... They gave the consumers to make it look like they're doing something for us. This makes no sense, this entire section. Let me explain. Let's go start in reverse. So they're supposed to give you a written explanation when the claims denied or partially denied. They did that. They did that already. They'll give, they have to put in a policy language why your claim was denied, send you a letter by email, mail, or both, Makes no sense. There's nothing to the advantage that helps us. This one, I don't know what the big deal is. So they have to send you a copy of the estimate within seven days after requesting it. If if they gave you a low ball estimate, do you really want to see it? Does it even matter? And then this one, the final one right here. So it requires the insurance company to make a physical inspection within 45 days after receiving a proof of loss. Here where this is confusing. This is where it is. In every policy, it states, except for a couple, State Farm being one, you need to provide a proof of loss when asked 60 days after that point when being asked. State Farm says, you just have to re to produce a proof of loss. It doesn't have to be when asked, it's when the claim is filed. So they're saying within 45 days after receiving a proof of loss, if you don't provide a proof of loss for a month and a half later, they get another 45 days. How is that fair to people? This, 
this lets you know that there's people making laws that have no idea about the claim handling business. It's a tragedy. So let me explain bad faith. Bad faith was an element when insurance companies essentially did things that were bad to people, handling a claim, denied the claim when they shouldn't have, um, delayed the claim, didn't properly render a decision within 90 days per the state law. All these different things. You can then have the opportunity to sue them for bad faith because they didn't protect you, the homeowner. They didn't do things according to the law. Now the state says, well, we feel bad that the insurance companies are being sued for bad faith. Um, that, that would be like saying, well, we feel bad for the drunk driver who drank too much beer, so you can't have punitive damages about against him, even though he, he's had two previous DUIs. So the punishing the insurance companies for bad behavior was the backbone of bad faith. Now the new law gives okay for companies to act in bad faith, basically, because they're requiring a breach of, a breach of contract in order for, for the bad faith lawsuit. Um, these two elements are going to be hard to do together. It's going to be difficult to do. So they've now eliminated the ability for people to fight back when they don't handle your claim um, appropriately. People you need to get help from the start on a claim, and I'm not just saying that. These laws are set up against a homeowner. It's despicable. So the last part um, about these new laws is a reinsurance program. Um, basically, it's going to reward bad management by giving them a $2 billion cushion. And you could say, Mike, well, that's just going to prevent these companies from being insolvent. If you look at the companies that have been insolvent, they were horribly managed. Most of them were very small companies. And you could say, Mike, but what about St. John's? St. John's was a top 15 insurance company, maybe number 12. The other 14 out of 15 have absolutely no issues with their, they're not in financial distress. There's no issues. So you're basically bailing out bad companies. Does that remind you of anything? Um, here's the other big thing. So they were going to try and eliminate attorney fees from being awarded when you're talking about an assignment of benefits. That's what, the, that's what AOB is, assignment of benefits. So you sign it, you give a contractor like a water mitigation, mold remediation company the ability to act on your behalf, get the money from the insurance company. A lot of times AOB companies, AKA water mitigation, mold remediation companies would have to sue the insurance company because the insurance company wouldn't pay them. So now the lobbyists for the insurance companies and your friend, Mr. Boyd, said, no, 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 we got to restrict this. So um, a very good person who's in the loop with all this said that an injunction has, will be filed. I think I read today some company in Orlando filed saying that it's unconstitutional, which I believe it is. So they'll probably win. So in closing, um, my opinion, strictly my opinion, I don't see how any homeowner can now go into a claim by themselves without being represented by public adjuster or attorney. You're going to have to be careful with attorney contracts because remember, these laws were coming after plaintiff's attorneys. There's some things that are going to have to be rearranged. So you're going to have to be very careful before you sign an attorney contract. Be very careful. I don't know how the attorneys are going to combat this. They'll think of a way. And usually that way is getting money. If they don't get it from the insurance company, it will come from your settlement. So you got to be careful. A good public adjuster is going to prevent that from the, insurance, from the attorneys taking advantage of you. I do it for my clients all the time. But 
these new laws do not protect you and me. They don't. It's totally for the insurance company, 100%. If you want to open up the insurance company, this is the time to do it in Florida. It's the time to do it. Um, getting help from the start is going to be a huge factor. I don't see how anybody can go into a claim confidently thinking that the insurance company is going to treat them fairly after these new laws. Anyhow, my name's Mike with the Claim Squad Public Adjusters. Here's a cell phone if you need to reach me. And um, my email, theclaimsquad at gmail.com. The website is theclaimsquad.com, www. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it.